Hello everyone, uh, this is my latest toy device I recently picked up. This, I, it, it wasn't really necessary for me to pick it up, you know, I don't really need one of these. But if I'm out, and let's just face it, I'm someone that doesn't really like staring at a tiny little screen all day. If I'm, you know, out at a restaurant, you know, they have Wi-Fi. I would normally bring my laptop, but laptops are somewhat clumsy. You have to make sure you bring the power supply with you, and when you get to the place where you're going to eat at, or say like go to Starbucks or something, um, you know, you have to find a spot that has a outlet. And let's just face it, most of us, when we uh, use public Wi-Fi, we're not really doing anything serious. We're just Checking email, Facebook, YouTube, just surfing, just doing basic web browsing. And honestly, a tablet would actually do the job. And let's just face it, I'm not willing to spend the hundreds and hundreds of dollars for an iPad 2. So I went with the cheap alternative and I figured, you know what? I've rooted devices before. You know, I have an HTC HD2 that's rooted and runs Android on here. Uh, this used to run Windows 6.5 and uh, yeah going from that to Android the phone's much much more powerful now plus I have it overclocked. Same thing with the new color. I have it overclocked to 1.2 gigahertz. Uh, if you're familiar with the new colors at stock speed they're at 800 megahertz. So, it is a more capable device now. And in fact, it's actually more useful now. You know, part, one of the biggest problems with these kinds of tablets, even with the, the Kindle Fire, is that they're really restrictive type of devices. The Nook Color is a more capable device in terms of what Barnes & Noble will allow you to do. You know, it has a SD card slot so you can put up to 32 gigs. I have 16 gigs in here. And they will allow you to, you know, upload your own content if you wanted to. The Kindle Fire doesn't really allow you to do that. They rely you more on using their cloud services. But, when you root it, uh, you can pretty much do whatever you want to it now. And in my case, I have a Android 2.3.7, which is, I want to say it's Froyo, I think. Um, let me do a quick check, Android versions. All right, let's see. 2.3.7 is what I have. Okay, it's actually gingerbread on here. So this is uh, running gingerbread on here. And I think it's the same thing on this phone here, I want to say. Let me double check this. And I do have it overclocked on here. Actually, I'm kind of curious what I have a set as. Okay, 1.2 gigahertz. So, settings, about phone, Okay, this is running 2.3.6, which is still gingerbread. It's just a version before the one running on this one here. And for the most part, it doesn't really... There's no real differences between these two versions for the most part. Um, obviously... Obviously, the biggest uh, difference 
with this version here and save honeycomb and uh, ice cream sandwich. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm still a little sick, so if my voice sounds a little weird, that's why. But the biggest difference between gingerbread and honeycomb and ice cream sandwich is that honeycomb and ice cream sandwich is actually built for tablets in mind. And at least as of right now, at least as of this video, there's there's no r real version or no real ROMs that fully supports the no color for honeycomb or ice cream sandwich. And uh, but the biggest difference with uh, with ice cream sandwich is that honeycomb is actually is is essentially just a tablet only version for Android. You never seen honeycomb on cell phones because it it just wasn't made for cell phones. It was strictly made just for tablets. But Ice Cream Sandwich is actually the first version of Android that's actually designed both for cell phones and tablets. So that it's kind of interchangeable. But this is running Gingerbread on here, which is, for the most part, is pretty much fine with me. Um, you know, that when the day comes that, you know, it has a Honeycomb or Ice Cream Sandwich, I'll upgrade it then. But for the most part, this is running pretty stable. It's not 100% perfect, of course. You know, even with this, it's not 100% perfect. But for the most part, it is. it does run pretty well. And it runs games really, really well. So, let me uh, load up, say, uh, World of Goo. You can see my reflection. Hi. This is actually a really fun puzzle game, which I've been getting more into lately. You know, I haven't really been playing first-person shooters or even the new Zelda game, even though I have those games, but I haven't really been playing that. I've been playing more puzzle games. You know, I have a 3DS, and, you know, I bought Mario Kart 7, but I've been playing more puzzle games on that system, too. I guess I'm just in a puzzle mood. So, let's see, it looks like I have to go up there. Come on, there you go, get on there. Okay. And yes, this is capable of running 3D games as well. But uh, I just wanted to show you this because this is actually a really good game. Anyway, I just want to show you this. And uh, if you have any questions about rooting devices to run Android, feel free to let me know because... Uh, with this and my HTC HD2, uh, I think I know a little bit about rooting devices and sticking other operating systems on here. So, like always, have.